Proteome profiler antibody arrays provide a simple yet accurate method for measuring the relative levels of phosphorylated kinases in a single sample of cell lysates. This is accomplished by first incubating cell lysates with a nitrocellulose membrane that has been pre-spotted in duplicate with a range of specific anti-receptor tyrosine kinase or RTK capture antibodies. Phosphorylated kinases are then detected using a horseradish peroxidase conjugated pan-antiphosphotyrosine antibody. Next, the array is incubated with chemiluminescence reagents that produce a signal proportional to the relative phosphorylation level of each RTK. The assay requires no specialised equipment, and the chemiluminescent signal can be measured using film or a camera system in the same manner as an immunoblot. Finally, the image data may be analysed using image analysis software to show changes in kinase phosphorylation levels. The main advantage of this technique compared to existing methods like Western blotting is that 49 different kinases may be measured simultaneously in a single sample, which saves time and conserves samples. Demonstrating this procedure will be Amy James and David Finkel, research associates in the array group. To begin sample preparation, remove the lysis buffer and array buffer from the R&D system's human phospho RTK array kit. The lysis buffer has been optimised for this kit, and substitution of other lysis buffers may affect the final performance of the array. To prevent proteolytic sample degradation, add A-protonin, Lupeptin and Pepstatin A to the volume of lysis buffer required for each cell lysate preparation. Collect lysates from untreated, ligand treated or inhibitor and ligand treated cells following the guidelines in the human phospho RTK array datasheet. Lysate concentration should be measured using a biosyncheninic acid assay. Sample concentration may be empirically adjusted for optimal sensitivity and low background. A range of 100 to 300 micrograms of lysate is recommended as an initial starting point. Prepare for the array assay by bringing all kit components to room temperature before use. To avoid contamination, Wear gloves while performing the procedures. Once reagents are at room temperature, pipette 2.0 milliliters of array buffer 1 into each well of the four well multi dish to be used. Array buffer 1 serves as a block buffer. Using flat tip tweezers, remove each membrane to be used from between the protective sheets and place in a well of the four well multi dish. The array number should be facing upward. Upon contact with array buffer 1, the blue dye from the spots will disappear, but the capture antibodies are retained in their specific locations. Incubate for one hour on a rocking platform. Orient the tray so that each array rocks end to end in its well. The surface of the array should be completely covered by block buffer. While the membranes are blocking, Dilute the desired quantity of cell lysates to a final volume of 1.5 milliliters with array buffer 1. Following incubation, aspirate array buffer 1 from the wells of the 4-well multi-dish and add the diluted lysate solutions. Place the lid on the 4-well multi-dish. Incubate overnight at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius on a rocking platform. A shorter incubation time may be used if optimal sensitivity is not required. The surface of the array should be completely covered by diluted lysate solutions. Next, carefully remove each membrane from the 4-well multi-dish and place into individual plastic containers with 20 milliliters of 1x wash buffer. The 4-well multi-dish may not be used to complete wash steps. Rinse the 4-well multi-dish with deionized or distilled water and dry thoroughly. Wash each membrane with 1x wash buffer for 10 minutes on a rocking platform shaker. 
Repeat two times for a total of three washes. Dilute the antiphosphotyrosine horseradish peroxidase detection antibody in 1x array buffer 2 using the dilution factor on the vial label. Pipette 2.0 ml of diluted solution into each well of the 4-well multi-dish. Then, carefully remove each membrane from its wash container. Allow excess buffer to drain from the membrane and return the membrane to the 4-well multi-dish containing the diluted antiphosphotyrosine HRP. Cover the wells with the lid and incubate for 2 hours at room temperature on a rocking platform. The surface of the array should be completely covered by diluted antiphosphotyrosine HRP. Then, proceed to wash each array as described previously. Complete the remaining steps without interruption. Carefully remove each membrane from its wash container. Allow excess buffer to drain from the membrane by blotting the lower edge onto absorbent paper. Place each membrane on a plastic sheet protector with the identification number facing up. Pipette 1 ml of the prepared Chemi Reagent mix evenly onto each membrane. Using less than 1 ml of Chemi Reagent mix per membrane may result in incomplete membrane coverage. Substitution of some high intensity chemiluminescent reagents for Chemi Reagents 1 and 2 may cause either increased background or diminished signal depending on the reagent. Carefully cover the membranes with a plastic sheet protector. Gently smooth out any air bubbles. It is critical that the chemi reagent mix is spread evenly to all corners of each membrane. Incubate for one minute. Next, Position paper towels on top and on the sides of the plastic sheet protector containing the membranes and carefully squeeze out excess chemi reagent mix. Remove the top plastic sheet protector and carefully lay an absorbent lab wipe on top of the membranes to blot off any remaining chemi reagent mix. Leaving membranes on the bottom plastic sheet protector Cover the membranes with plastic wrap, taking care to gently smooth out any air bubbles. Wrap the excess plastic wrap around the back of the sheet protector so that the membranes and sheet protector are completely wrapped. Place the membranes with the identification numbers facing up in an autoradiography film cassette that is not used for radioactive isotope detection. Exposed to Kodak Biomax light film for 1 to 10 minutes. Multiple exposures are recommended. Alternatively, images may be collected using a chemiluminescence compatible imager such as the CareStream Health Image Station 4000mm Pro. Positive signals seen on developed film can be quickly identified by placing the transparency overlay on the array image and aligning it with pairs of reference spots printed in the corners for this purpose. The location of controls and capture antibodies is listed in the appendix of the Human Phospho RTK array datasheet. Pixel densities on developed film can be collected using a transmission mode scanner such as the Epson Perfection V750 Pro. Create a template to analyse pixel density in each spot of the array using an appropriate imaging analysis software program. Compatible programs can be found in the written protocol accompanying this video. Export signal values to a spreadsheet file for manipulation in a program such as Microsoft Excel. Determine the average signal or pixel density of the pair of duplicate spots representing each receptor tyrosine kinase. Using a signal from a clear area of the array or negative control spots as a background value, subtract an averaged background signal from each spot. Compare corresponding signals on different arrays to determine the relative change in RTK phosphorylation levels between samples. This protocol demonstrates how the human phospho-RTK array 
may be used to screen the effect of ligand stimulation and inhibitors on RTK phosphorylation. Data is shown for MDA-MB453 cells that were untreated, treated with recombinant human neuregulin beta-1, heregulin beta-1 for 5 minutes, or pre-treated with known ERB-B family inhibitors prior to HRG beta-1 treatment. An increase in phosphorylation is observed for ERB-B2, ERB-B3 and ERB-B4 capture spots when comparing untreated cells with HRG beta-1 treated MDA-MB453 cells. Whereas, the treatment of cells with all three ERB-B family selective inhibitors prior to HRG beta-1 incubation caused reductions in ERB-B2, ERB-B3 and ERB-B4 phosphorylation. Here, data is shown for Kato-3 cells known to overexpress the RTK FGFR2. In this set of experiments, Kato-3 cells were untreated treated with recombinant FGF acidic and heparin, or pre-treated with FGF R-selective inhibitors prior to treatment with recombinant FGF acidic and heparin. While there is constitutive phosphorylation of both EGFR and FGFR2 in untreated Kato3 cells, an increase in FGFR2 phosphorylation was observed upon FGF treatment. Incubating the cells with inhibitors resulted in decreased FGFR2 and EGFR phosphorylation. Although these inhibitors are known to affect the phosphorylation of FGFR family members, these results demonstrate the utility of the human phospho-RTK array for monitoring the effect a specific concentration of inhibitor may have on other RTKs, such as EGFR in this case. While performing this procedure, it is important to remember that high background and low signal may result if the arrays are allowed to dry out during any part of this process. After collecting PHOSPHO-RTK array data using this procedure, additional arrays may be used to measure changes in other affected signaling pathways such as intracellular kinases, cytokines, and apoptosis-related molecules. After watching this video, you should have a better understanding of how antibody arrays are used to measure changes in receptor tyrosine kinase phosphorylation.